Hi, it's Tony from Cassette Comeback. And yes, Cassette Comeback. Oh, you can see me in the reflection. But yes, you're looking at a record deck here. You are still on the right channel. I've not suddenly turned into Vinyl Comeback because that, well, Vinyl never went away, did it? But I just want to have a little chat with you beforehand because a lot of you have been blagging me over years to get into vinyl and I've always maintained I don't want to get into vinyl. Why not? Well, you see, this is what I remember as being vinyl when I was young. This is one of my dad's original vinyls. Grease, you know. Yeah, it's a great big huge thing in a paper sleeve. It's fragile, it would scratch easily. It had crackles, it had pops, it would skip. I didn't like vinyl. Vinyl to me was a means to an end. When I could, I'd get something on cassette. And when CDs came, which weren't as fragile, had beautiful, precise audio quality, were smaller, I went with CDs and never returned to vinyl ever again. Well, at least until now. So why did I not come back to vinyl when so many people are telling me, look, Tony, it's amazing. Well, when I was younger, we were just a working class family. As far as hi-fi went, if it played what we wanted it to play and it sounded like what we thought it was gonna sound like, that was good enough. We didn't get a good hi-fi until about oof, 1990. And even then it was a pioneer all-in-one stack system. But I thought it sounded amazing. It was a lot better than the, you know, like things like this, but with a built-in cassette deck and external speakers, all-in-one units that we used to have that my dad used to get secondhand. And because I'd never heard vinyl on a good system, or at least never looked after the vinyl, you know, I didn't clean vinyl, I didn't wipe them. I mean, you know, right now I'm, I'm looking at the fat under £450 to buy a vinyl cleaning vacuum because, well, I've got the bug. And that's the thing, I always thought vinyl was rubbish. And then I got back into it, and I got back into it because, apart from everybody telling me that you should get into vinyl because it's the ultimate analogue format after, of course, reel to reel, but I got back into it because I wanted to do something for all the amazing new artists I used to find on my radio show and for myself and I thought about releasing some vinyl records. I originally released on cassette, I mean, do you remember this one? Bing! It sold well, it sold out very quickly and I thought, why not vinyl? Because a lot of people said, oh, you're going to release it on vinyl. So I thought, let's release it on vinyl. But the thing is, I need to actually be able to listen to what I'm releasing to make sure that it's of the quality that I want it to be. So I've got myself a vinyl deck. It's, a, it's an audio technica. I don't know much about them, but all I do know is that this thing is several multiples better than anything that I'd listened to vinyl on before. Yeah, you're going to say, oh, it's rubbish. You need to get yourself a blah, blah, blah. And you need to have an MC cartridge and blah. No, this sounds great to me so far, but only because I've looked more into it. For example, one of the first things I bought, strangely enough, is this. The original 1986 pressing of Dire Straits Brothers in Arms, one of my all-time favourite albums of all time. And it sounds garbage. It sounds garbage. I mean, the record itself is lovely and clean, but it sounds garbage. And I was talking to a friend, he said, yeah, it could have just been played to death. You, you play vinyl loads and loads and loads, it, it's going to deteriorate. You've got to think it's a little needle bouncing around in a plastic groove. You bounce it often enough, it's going to chip away at that groove and it's going to sound worse. Oh, I thought, this isn't going well. So again, I went back into my dad's collection of stuff and found this stunner. Hmm. The original Rolling Stones album in mono. This is the original release from 1964. Yeah, it's filthy and it sounds like garbage. I'm not being convinced here. So I'm thinking, is it all snake oil? And then I started thinking, okay, let me get some brand new vinyl. Some brand new vinyl that I know is nice and clean, not been abused. Let's give this another shot. And I bought this. It's hard to get into the thing, but this is, this is the album, one of the albums that changed my life. 
This album, when I first heard it from Gunship, was an album that said, wow, amazing new music I do like is still out there. And this is a double heavyweight. Oh my. I was convinced after listening to it. Oh, this sounds good. So I went out to convince myself a bit more. And I bought this. No, this isn't the same one. This is a remastered 180 gram audio file quality one. Some people say that this isn't the best version because it's quite loud and the fact that it's on two discs but still has the same running time says to me, yeah, this was mastered loud. But this sounded good. And going down that road, it's like, okay, so it seems to be whether it's clean, whether it's been looked after, this sort of determines how good something's going to be. So after listening to a lot, I've come to the conclusion that, yeah, I get vinyl now, and unfortunately the bug has hit. And it got me thinking, why? There's still pops and clicks on vinyl. Why do I like it so much? Because, again, it's like cassettes. It's not about sound quality, purely. It's about everything else. It's the thrill of the chase of finding vinyl. It's how beautiful some of the sleeves are. You know, I mean, look at this. I still get joy when I see this. My favourite Now album, Now 12. It's, it's lovely. You know, it, it's big. It's, it's, it's got a gatefold. You know, it's got information about it. stuff that, that you don't get with a digital download. I know you get that with CDs as well, but it's the fact that I keep saying nothing worthwhile in life is ever easy. Vinyl, you've got to treat it right. You've got to make sure your stylus is clean, your deck's clean, the record's clean. There's no anti-static. And after you've cleaned it and put it on there and you get that sound coming out, it's been worth it. You appreciate it more. You know, it, it, it's as simple as that. And... One of the greatest quotes I saw recently came from John Peel, I'll put it here. You know, bing. People say that CDs are better because there's no surface noise and he says life has surface noise. And that's it. That was what put, you know, this is like the aha. And even though I've been in cassettes for a long time, the aha, why cassettes? Because they're imperfect. Nothing in this world is perfect. Cassettes are imperfect. Vinyl's imperfect. The imperfections are what make it real. You don't listen to a concert in a hall that has no background noise. You don't even go to the cinema and watch something on the cinema and there's no background noise. When I'm listening to this deck through these speakers in this room, there's background noise. There's the cars going by outside. There's the hum from the fan in my PC. There's background noise. It's real life and that's why it doesn't matter. Because it is real life. Real life isn't silent. And so you take all that together with the aesthetics and you have an endearing format. And plus, if you look after your vinyl, if the EMPs come, it's going to wipe out all magnetic media and all digital media. Vinyl will be the only thing after the nuclear war that will still be able to play music. I mean, we'll have to figure out new ways to make decks and and amplifiers, but the vinyl will have survived it because it's not susceptible to EMPs. And that's me with my apocalypse head on. <clears throat> anyway, so all that mixture of good sound and aesthetics is why I've, I've grown to get into vinyl and understand it. So what's that got to do with the cassettes? Well, a lot of the time people say as soon as they get a vinyl because they don't want to wear it out, the first play is the best, so they record it onto a good cassette. So, talking about good cassettes and good aesthetics, let's look at the cassette that we're going to actually record some vinyl onto today. So, this cassette I'm going to use today is... Oh, it's just an amazing cassette. It is this. The 1986 TDK SAX European version. I feel saucy. Let's just take a brand new one. So what do I like so much about this cassette? Well, the first thing is, look at it. This looks premium. 
it really does it looks premium we already know the SAX apart from one exception is the best type 2 that TDK made and the exception being the triple call SAXS but this is a 1986 SAX this has the same tape in it as the extremely expensive and I've done a video on it here Bing SAXG which is also from 1986 so this has the same tape but a worse shell well I say worse shell it's not in the alloy shell that the SAXG is in but this is still a beautiful cassette so super Avalon cassette high resolution laboratory standard cassette mechanism because there were lots of laboratories recording on tapes I don't know what that means laboratory standard you know I don't think there was a standard for audio cassettes in the lab but anyway so SAX9 so let's have a look at the back dual layer super Avalon so yeah that's it SA single layer cobalt cope dual cobalt cope cobalt dope coat and then we've got the SAX which is a dual layer oh no is yep you see like I say it's in English German and French because like I say this is the European version now the the American version of this um most probably the same tape and the same shell it's just the big difference is the sticker I know the Japanese versions also had this style of sticker as well but um, the Americans didn't you just had the bar across the bottom a bit like the previous version but anyway let's open this up I'm not going to do the old uh, knife because it's a joy to open these I absolutely love these now I will be using it and not putting it back into seal and besides I have more so <laughs> it's nice to be able to say that no nope, vacuum sealed you ain't coming off easy so it's gonna have to be the old tear away tear away at it come on here as I tell you it's uh, the quality of the wrapper on this it's, it's it's not going anywhere I'm gonna have to get nasty with it in a minute okay we get nasty <laughs> scratch the back of the case with the scissors nice never mind all for you guys so there we go I've just turned this from a 40 pound cassette into a five pound cassette there it is all in its beautiful glory just like I say it's not it, this is gold foil it's not like um, just printed gold like some like uh, on the scotch um, ferro that I did a while back which was gold face but it was just printed I mean it looks great but you know it's got a there but you can't really write on that unless you've got a permanent marker and that's why they still give you stickers and they give you these strange sort of off white greeny stickers to stick on it which I always thought was well wrong it does it looks you know you put that sort of thing on there it doesn't look quite right but that's the stickers you get in there look at the way it reflects beautiful and then um Oh, it talks about the laboratory standard cassette mechanism which is designed for optimum tape transport running performance mirror image shelf halves bubble surface inner liners dual spring pressure pads yeah yeah because if you look at the pressure pads in that you can see it's not just a straight one it's sort of like an oval shape with a gap in the middle so there's two on it but uh, all in all yes I think this is quite possibly one of the best looking cassettes ever and you've got to think as well as that it has got the uh, same tape in as a much revered SAXG so it could be argued this could possibly be the second best type 2 tape that TDK has ever made after of course like I keep saying the SAXG but yeah beautiful inside and out and uh, let's record some vinyl on it let's get some good quality vinyl with all the cracks and pops it doesn't matter onto this gorgeous gorgeous cassette so this is a tricky shot I'm going to use my Revox because it's the only one I can get in the same shot as the deck and I'm going to have to shuffle around a bit on this so my usual really high production qualities <clears throat> uh, might suffer a bit in this but um, the track I'm going to be using for this is one from my new record label I mean I have the 
the title at the start, Red Manor Records. But uh, this is from, going to be from our up and coming release because basically vinyl's gone through the roof. I'm waiting now 14 weeks to get a vinyl pressed, but I want to think my vinyls are going to be as good as they get. And the beauty is that I feel for musicians now because I'm a musician myself and everything's on streaming platforms. Musicians don't make any money from any streaming platforms. Streaming platforms should be looked at as just an advertisement because an artist will make more money from selling one piece of physical media. And I'm talking most new artists here, those that, you know, don't have a gazillion followers. But most new artists will make more money from one piece of physical media than they'll make in, like, years on streaming platforms. I personally have never made a penny out of any of the streaming platforms. Yet, the engineers at Master Stuff want paying. The streaming platforms themselves want a subscription price. The people that do artwork want a subscription price. The artists who create the music that it's all based around get virtually nothing. So this is why physical media is coming back. This is why vinyl is outselling, well, from the stats I was reading, it's selling as good now as it did in the early 90s. So I wanted to make sure that I could get new artists that deserve it, handpick the tunes, put them onto brilliant releases. And I'm not messing around. I mean, this release, I don't want to give the name yet because it's going to be all hyped up when it comes out. But we're going to listen to the uh, the test pressings. Um, this is the test pressing of this particular album. It's going to be a double album. It's going to be on heavyweight vinyl. These test pressings are on heavyweight, 180 gram vinyl. The only difference is the real album is going to come in a beautiful double colour gatefold and the vinyl is going to be transparent coloured as well. Because I've read that transparent is better because vinyl is actually pure transparent and these are black because they have carbon to it um, and supposedly some people say that affects the sound quality I don't know but they look cooler and the way that we've mastered this we we use a technique called this quiet vinyl now I'm not an expert on vinyl but I'm learning as I go but I've employed somebody who is an expert she's called Danielle she's in Australia and she's worked with loads of live acts she's been an audio engineer most of her life She's got a synth rig that I couldn't believe. I mean, she's repairing a Fairlight CMI at component level, if you know what that means. So she's mastering these. And the way that these are mastered, because all of these artists are independent and they, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not saying these are analog because they're not. They've mostly been all done in the digital domain. But what we found is that some digital masters do not make good vinyl. You know, because there's something called the loudness war. Remember the loudness war? You know, and if you look at uh, a typical Loudness Moor track, it looks like this. You know, it's completely brick-walled, so they say. There's no dynamics there, there's no headroom anymore. And a lot of people are taking these sort of masters and pressing them onto vinyl. And it don't work for vinyl. Vinyl's a little needle that bounces around inside of a plastic groove. If you've got it really loud, the groove isn't that big anymore. It's that big. And the needle's having to go like that. And that causes issues. It's not designed for that. So when we do a quiet vinyl master, Danielle takes the original tune and we ask for all the artists to give us a tune without any brick wall limiting or any compression with a maximum peak of plus six decibels. So there's headroom and there's dynamics. Danielle then puts it through all her vintage analog outboard gear. She's got Neve stuff, etc. And the main crux of it is, is that we mono the bass below a certain level. We mono the treble before a certain level. And we get rid of all the S's in the middle, the sibilance. That's done. And then again, it's a maximum of minus six decibel. So these are quiet. I've already set the Revox up to record this, and this is recording it at an input level of minus 6. Normally, I record at an input level of minus 15 for a CD, but that's how it should sound. It's like this. I got put off because I got modern vinyl that was obviously pressed from Brickwall CD Masters, and they sounded crap. But like this one is a modern reissue. This one isn't. This one is very good because I was recording this the other day. At my, sorry, it was plus five. I was recording it onto a, an MX. 
max sell at plus five, but every now and then this would jump up to plus nine. This has not been brick walled, just like ours are not brick walled. So I'm hoping that everyone's gonna like the quality of the releases. Now I have to get up out of the chair because, well, basically I can't reach both of these at the same time. So let's listen to some music now on this beautiful SAX. This track is from a wonderful songstress. She's called Zadja, and you can hear her Swedish twang in her vocals, these lovely dreamy vocals. This song isn't out anywhere as far as I know. It's an exclusive for this album. Like I said, the albums are focused on brand new music from musicians you've probably never heard of. So stop listening to Dark Side of the Moon for the hundredth time. Listen to some new stuff. This is beautiful, dreamy synth pop. It's not even pop, it's just beautiful, dreamy music. And uh, if you look in the links below, you can link to some other of her tunes because she's got quite a few out there. They're all superb and she deserves to be listened to. So let's listen to it on this SAX. So if you'll just bear with me, um, I'll get the SAX recording. Just uh, one second. Right, yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's record it. Oh, come on, Revox, let's go. Right, and now let's fire up the vinyl, and I probably won't get it on Bob on first time, but let's have a look. Oh, that was good. Let's let it skip. That'll damage the record. Right, there we go. There we go, that's the track.
So yes, yes, this, this whole video has been a not too very subtle advert for my record company, but eh, what can you do? I mean, I don't ask for anything else from you. And I'm sure the comments will be full of, you've got a terrible deck and you don't know how to use it and your weight in the middle is rubbish and you need a moving coil car, whatever. But I'm just saying that I get vinyl now and I understand why people love vinyl. And I think physical media now more than ever is important to new artists because new artists are not making money from streaming services at all and it's just the whole aspect of physical media again which makes it wonderful I mean look at it beautiful beautiful I mean recording something like that to something like this on a deck like that Revox for me if it gets much better in music I uh, I don't care personally I'm happy to stay there and I just want to show you something else right this record Beatmasters Rock the house. I, I don't think dance music has progressed since this and this came out in like now was it 1987? 87, 88, but um, I bought this second hand, yeah, and this sort of Shows me what I'm, I'm talking about right when I, I took this out and then we got the old record there It is it's a bit scratched, but inside here There was this Now I don't know who Katrina is, but 30 odd years ago, Katrina loved that album, sorry, album, that record, loved that sleeve so much that she drew a picture of the sleeve. This isn't something that was given away with it. This is a, a felt tip coloured in drawing that, that Katrina did. How many people do that now? How many children do that now of something that they've streamed? that they treasure something so much that they drew a picture of it. I'm gonna guess none. And this is why physical media is so special. And this is why physical media will never die because it's more than the sum of the parts and we like physical stuff and we like to own it. And more than that, we like to know that when we buy something physical, we're actually supporting the artists thinking just because you have a Spotify subscription that you pay every month you're supporting the new artists that you love you're not you're supporting Spotify and the already mega rich artists on there you want to support the artists that you love go out and buy a physical release from them it's as simple as that and as for the SAX well I know it's an old tied phrase but I could never have enough of these. You won't find these for sale on my web store. I'm doing yet another video about cassettes I don't sell because the odd occasion when these turn up, I buy them and I buy them for me. Yes, I know it's stupid to say, I'm gonna record something on this. I've just turned this cassette into something that's worth nothing when it was worth probably 40 pounds when it was in the wrapper. I mean, the prices have gone nuts lately. You know, a, a last generation SA is £10 now, so what's this vintage, hard to find classic? 
Yeah, I know, I know. But you know what? I don't care. And sometimes in this life, especially now, you've got to take pleasure where you find it. Because you don't know if that pleasure is going to be there tomorrow. So thanks again for watching. Hope you found this video interesting. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, take care out there and happy taping. Bye bye.